Hey there, welcome to my latest landscape photography and wilderness venture here in Tasmania. Today I'm down the beautiful, not so sunny west coast of Tasmania today. There's a beautiful low lying mist surrounding the landscape today. And I know it's going to be a magnificent day. The sun is trying to poke up through the back here, but I think this fog will lift and, like I said, make a great sort of a day. I'm just going to have a bit of a look around at a few different things today. I am heading off to, I'm going to start my blog off in a beautiful little waterfall down here on the west coast called Nelson Falls. While I'm down that area, I'm going to check out a few little rivers that feed off Nelson Falls, maybe get some pretty cool stream photography, and then I might head off down towards the coast and finish my day down there and make my way back to the northwest of Tasmania. <laughs> So I have just been making my way to these to this waterfall I just spoke about and what I have just noticed is the sun is peeling beautifully over the horizon here and I can't help just notice how beautiful it is with the fog rising through this button grass plain that I'm just making my way across. So I have just detoured slightly and I am going to make way over and try and get a really nice composition of these trees with the sun in the background. So the sunrise here across the west coast is absolutely beautiful this morning. I've just stopped in this button grass field here, which I'm very pleased about doing. These trees are getting some stunning backlighting from the sun here as the fog's starting to peel off in the horizon. What I really like about this spot is these beautiful little flowering bushes coming up through the field with all the mildew or the early morning mildew giving a beautiful contrast across the foreground. I've just set the camera up on the stand over here. I've got the 35mm Zeiss lens on which I think is a beautiful lens for this image. Camera settings are f11 at a 60 of a second. I haven't gone too technical with this exposure. I didn't want to add any time lapse or any motion blur to this picture with a bright sun straight behind me. And I've set the exposure at, like I said, f11 at a 60 of a second. And the results are quite stunning. <laughs> So I'm just following this beautiful little trail here to Nelson Falls. It's a very easy waterfall to get into on the west coast here of Tasmania, a very easy track. So I'm just making my way down to the fall now. I noticed a bit of sun is starting to poke over the horizon, which hopefully doesn't compromise my images too much, but we're about to find out. So I have just parked myself literally in the middle of this stream to capture this beautiful waterfall. And photographing waterfalls at times can be very, very uncomfortable. All these rocks are super slippery, very cold and wet. I've got some little branches here poking them in the eye, but I'm where I want to be. These branches are where they want to be, so this is how it's got to be. I'm really, really happy with this image I've just taken. I've particularly tried to focus on this beautiful little foreground down here. There's a tiny little cascade of water coming over the rock shelf there. And I've had to take two exposures, one to try and focus that foreground pin sharp there. And I've also taken a secondary exposure to capture the waterfall, which is about 25 meters in front of me, maybe less. I have put the circular polarizer on this time, but I've chosen not to use it to cut the glare through the water. 
I've chosen it just simply to stop the camera down and get a longer shutter speed. I feel that leaving the catch light across the water adds a little bit more highlighting to this picture and by cutting through that glare I've found that it just makes the image too flat. So I've gone the opposite way around using the circular polarizer. I have set the camera up at f11 at four seconds and the pictures that I'm getting are quite beautiful straight off the camera. I've just finished shooting Nelson Falls here down the west coast and I've just decided to come further down the coast. It doesn't look like the coast but I'm actually not far off sea level at the moment. I'm heading down into a old shipping port called Pillinger which is quite amazing but I'm not interested in the port itself today. I'm actually interested in photographing the river that goes down into this beautiful little harbour known as the Bird River. It is a beautiful river here in Tasmania, probably one of my most favourite rivers. Uh, the drive in is quite tricky. You're only supposed to come down here in a four wheel drive, which is what I have today. And the drive in itself is just as spectacular as the photography. So let's go and have a quick look at this road in and then check out the river. Stay tuned. So I have just arrived to the start of this beautiful little wilderness experience here in Tasmania. I am going to follow what was once an old railway line down through to this old disused shipping port and it is a beautiful walk, quite easy once you've actually done the drive in. I don't think I'll go all the way in towards the end, I think I'm just more interested in the river at this stage. It's about two hours one way and given the time of day I don't think I'll have the time to make the full trip down there. So I have just been taking some photographs down here of the river and it's quite difficult at the moment. I'm trying to combat an overhead sun at the moment with no clouds that were predicted, which makes landscape photography around rivers quite difficult when you're after slow shutter speed. So what I've done is I found this beautiful little bend in the river where that sun has not been able to stretch around yet. And I'm just gonna isolate some sections of this stunning river to try and give you guys a feel of what this river looks like. So if I go over, whoop. so if I just bring myself back over to the camera and I'll try and create a little bit of shade here for you guys so you can see what I'm doing. I've just shot straight down this bend in the river here and what I'm really paying attention to is this beautiful big rock on the right hand side and how the current of water is bringing these beautiful little bubbles along the stream as well. And what I've done is I've stopped the camera right down to give a beautiful exposure across the water and creation motion blur with those streams of bubbles. And the exposure that I've done is F11 at eight seconds, which is a stunning picture and a good start to my trip down the Bird River here in Tasmania. Something that is actually really hard to do is see the river. And as a photographer, I think the best thing you can do instead of looking, or the next best thing you can do instead of looking is to use your ears and I can hear the water pounding behind this section of ravine. So I'm just gonna take myself downhill a little bit and with a bit of luck, I might be able to see a beautiful waterfall. And down there, I can just see hints of a waterfall. 
and at this stage I think it's just a bit too dangerous to try and find my way down there so I'm just going to stick my head over a few different spots to see if there's a safe passage down this fall which is good because there's sort of one here this bank isn't too dangerous which is awesome I don't think I'm going to find a, a mud hole or anything like that that sun is really starting to interfere so I'm going to have to hurry and try and grab a shot down in here. That waterfall is quite stunning. It is getting a lot of light pierced through it, but I might get some nice backlighting if I can get down low enough and try and avoid that big piece of driftwood choking the front of this. I have managed to put myself down into this beautiful little spot and I'm covered in little thistles at the same time, which is not enjoyable when they get everywhere inside your clothes. Anyway, I've taken a picture right down on the front of that little rock shelf right down here at the base of the river there and I took a photograph and I was really dominated by this piece of driftwood or this fallen tree that's landed its way down into this river. So I thought instead of having that dominate the scene I've decided to come back a little bit further up this bank and the one thing the sun has done is it's illuminated this sensational foreground here with this bit of vegetation here and I'm getting some beautiful highlights on these little leaves here in the foreground and I've taken two exposures obviously I've had to focus stack this being so close to me this little bush versus an infinity background over there so I've taken the first exposure of this bush at only half a second I notice there's a little bit of movement in the leaves and if I go any more than one second then I'm going to get too much, um, too much blur happening on the leaves later on in production. And then I've taken a secondary image of the background at a hole. Two seconds, which I still feel is a little bit dark, so I might just lift that up a little bit and take another exposure. This is a little bit tricky. I've got lens flare coming in the front, so I've had to make do with my temporary lens hood and this camera is great there's a little green button or a little green light that shows up on the back when I've taken an image and I've successfully taken that without the lens flare so for now back down this stream a little bit further investigation to see what else I can find and back to you soon So I have just spied one last waterfall here along the Bird River, or well, might be the last waterfall, I'm not too sure. And I'm just going to try and make my way down to this waterfall, which should be a little bit interesting once again. Something I've just been thinking about on this trip is I've been doing a lot of focus stacking with my images. And the reason I focus stack is within my lens range, which is typically a prime lens I use, I struggle to get a really close foreground and focus on infinity or the background at the same time. So by taking two images, one focusing the foreground and one the background gives me a crystal clear in focus image from foreground to background. So being the nature of the images I've been taking, I might make this my focusing stack episode here in Tasmania alongside this beautiful scenery and tricker to get through here down Tasmania's west coast and that is a beautiful little waterfall in there which I'll just try and give you guys a look at focusing on getting down this bank at the same time I really don't want to lose my footing through here because there's only one way to go and that's down really fast and I've got to step over these beautiful big old trees And already I'm getting quite excited that this waterfall hasn't been overrun by the bright midday sun at this stage. And it just goes to show how dense and thick the bush here is in Tasmania as the sun hasn't penetrated this part of the wilderness. Even though it's getting close to midday. So time to set up the camera once again 
and try and capture this beautiful little shoot coming down this little ravine. I've just put myself in position to shoot this last waterfall and true to form, I have focus stacked this image. I've had to do a focus stack of three images, one for the background, I've shot that at infinity or I've focused that to infinity, but I've also had to take two separate exposures or two different focused exposures for the foreground here. So this rock here, which is about three and a half meters away, I had to do another shot of that at a mid-range focus and also to capture these beautiful little ferns just in the foreground here I've had to reel my focus stack right back and I've had to focus that as far as 600 between zero and a meter roughly on this lens here to capture that without being too blurry and as you can see I've got some razor sharp well you probably can't see but that's actually razor sharp through there at the moment the background is quite blurry but when I overlay the sharp image in post-production then all of this will come through beautifully sharp and I'll get a nice range of definition all the way through this image. I have been lucky with the sun I can notice just over the back there I don't know if you can see this but there is a limb poking up over the top of that canyon there and it's just starting to catch the sun's rays so that tells me the sun is well and truly nearly overhead. I've just been blocked by the canopy of trees is there and you might be able to see the sun up through there which means I've done very very well today to capture a couple of waterfalls and some beautiful streams while it's been a crystal clear day up above me here in Tasmania. So I have investigated the other side of the Bird River here and due to fairly deep water through there and not fancy getting my wet today, my feet wet today, I've decided to abandon that mission. What I have noticed is on my way back over the other this side of the river and crept my way back up is this beautiful submerged log which is cast its way across the river and it looks quite stunning as a leading line for this waterfall which I just shot. If you're anything like me, you will finish one photography trip and just throw all your gear in the closet or back on the shelf and forget about it the next time which is the case this time around and I've just literally spent the last two minutes trying to clean this six stop neutral density filter. Why do I want to use that? It's the, because the foam generated from this waterfall is travelling through the front of this scene but it is really quite slow being a bit deeper water and further downstream so I really need to slow this stream down and I just hope you can see what I'm doing here sliding that into my filter holder. I've got it over the top of my circular polarizer which I need to cut through the water to highlight this log and the exposure I'm doing here is a whopping 30 seconds at f8 which I'm going to fire off now and what I've noticed at this time of day is these beautiful rocks this one on the left and this one on the right side of the bank are really starting to illuminate with the late afternoon sun across the green moss. So really am quite excited to see what these results are gonna turn out like and it could possibly be one of the best images of the day. So I'll just wait for this to time out for another 10 seconds. And it's just doing noise reduction, in camera noise reduction, which takes another 30 seconds of my time. And straight away those results on screen look stunning. really is starting to get cold here now late afternoon in Tasmania's west coast and I'd just like to say thank you for watching my latest landscape and wilderness photography adventure and I look forward to seeing you next time.